Senator Kennedy, face the nation. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you're about to see Democratic presidential candidate Senator John F. Kennedy of Massachusetts face the nation in a spontaneous and unrehearsed interview with veteran correspondents from the nation's press. Peter Lissigar, chief of the National Bureau of the Chicago Daily News. Blair Clark of CBS News. And William H. Lawrence of the Washington Bureau of the New York Times. And now here's the moderator of Face the Nation, CBS News correspondent, Stuart Novins. Here in Wisconsin, Tuesday's primary election will determine to which candidate the state's 31 delegate votes will go at the Los Angeles Democratic Convention. It will be the first real test of the relative strength of Senators Kennedy and Humphrey. Senator Humphrey has already appeared before our panel, and now Senator John Kennedy of Massachusetts is here to face the nation. Senator, we want to get right into the question, so if you will, let's start with this first one from Mr. Lawrence. Senator, for several weeks now, you and Senator Humphrey have been beating the bushes and chasing the voters of Wisconsin all over. I think most observers think that for one of you to to get a victory, you'll have to get a majority of the popular vote and a majority of the delegates. Now that you've looked the situation over and the campaign is almost finished, candidly, just how do you think you will do? Well, I'm hopeful, but I wouldn't make any prediction. I think that it's very difficult to make a judgment in a state like Wisconsin. I'm hopeful we're going to win. Senator, how would you define a victory? What are your terms for a victory for you here? Well, I think uh, Mr. Lawrence has described it, uh, to get certainly a majority of the popular vote. The delegates, of course, you could get a majority or a minority, regardless of the popular vote, the way the congressional districts are arranged. But I would hope, I think, for any kind of a victory, you'd have to get a majority of the delegates, too. Senator, one of the charges that Senator Humphrey has been making about your campaign is that it was a very expensive one. And I'd like to quote him. He calls it the most highly financed the most plush, the most extravagant in the history of politics in the Middle West. Have you been spending money extravagantly in this I campaign? certainly haven't, uh, Mr. Lissigo. We made a financial report on what we had expended, which was $72,000, and uh, which included our radio and TV and our, uh, the uh, literature that we had. Now, before we're finished, uh, we're going to, uh, we'll have a larger figure than that, because that, of course, was be the, up to the week before the election. We've had TV since then. And uh, it will go higher than that. But I must say that uh, there is no evidence for that uh, very extraordinary charge. We have uh, our TV and radio time is easily ascertainable, and it's about the same as Senator Humphreys. We made a uh, distribution of literature, a lot of it by hand by volunteers, some of it in the rural areas by mail, and that's very determined. We had no billboards. So that I think you can make a determination about where money went, and I think that our campaign is in accordance with the, that of Senator Humphrey. My judgment is that we will expend about the same amount. Do your figures, Senator, account for money that comes in from the outside? And as much as I understand, you have to report only on what you spend. Well, the law in Wisconsin is extremely vague. For example, in the reporting of a, a few days ago, Senator Humphrey reported uh, only $500 expended for radio, TV, and none for billboards. Well, now, we all know that there are billboards, and there's been quite a lot of time hired on radio and TV by Senator Humphrey, as there has been by me. But he reported none of it because he is not compelled, in fact, really, to almost report anything. The Wisconsin law is not very precise, and therefore, there's really no direction as to what you must report or not report. When you make a final tabulation, Senator, will you include such things as transportation? Yes, within the state. Yes, within the state. That's correct. Well, Senator, I had heard the estimate that a primary campaign in any state cost about $250,000. And I, I believe you agreed with that figure at one point. Well, it depends on the size of the state. I would say in, the si in a state like uh, Wisconsin that it would probably run $135,000 to $40,000. That's my judgment about what the campaign would probably run in total, including every conceivable expense that you might have, uh, it might run that high. Now, if you hire a half hour or 15 minutes of statewide TV, it costs you approximately $5,000. If you hire a statewide, a spot, cost you 10 seconds or so, might cost you $200. I must say, gentlemen, TV is not very inexpensive. Uh, newspaper advertising is not inexpensive. Billboards, nor is mailing inexpensive. If you have a, uh, a million uh, homes in the state, and you try to cover it by mail, of course, that costs the money. I think you should realize, however, 
that the Brookings Institute states that President Eisenhower's campaign in 1952, when costs were lower, was two million five hundred thousand dollars. Taft, it said, exceeded that, and Governor Stevenson's in 1956, according to Brookings, cost more than a million five hundred thousand dollars. It is unfortunate that campaigns cost uh, some money, but I must say that I think ours is in a reasonable expenditure, which is easily ascertainable. You can tell exactly what we've spent it on, and we're Sen going to report it. Senator, another charge that has arisen in this campaign by Senator Cum uh, Humphrey's campaign manager is that you well, and your... Well, many charges have arisen. Well, uh, this, this seems door. fairly important, is yeah. that you and your family have made effective and subtle use of the religious issue. Well, now, by what means, Mr. Lismore, can you imagine anything more ridiculous, really, than that charge that I would attempt to make use of religion? Now, why, uh, I think that that is an extraordinary charge that Mr. Heaney made and Mr. Ivan Nestigan, our chairman. There was no evidence produced. What is the evidence for that? Uh, Senator, I'd like to ask you as a question to follow out of that, whether you think... Yeah, but I regard that as a very serious uh, political charge. I was surprised when it was made, and I'd like to know by in what way it's... So. Do you think there's a Catholic voting block in the state of Wisconsin? No, I think I've stated on many occasions that I hope that no one would vote for me because I was a Catholic or against me for I was a Catholic. A great many serious issues facing the United States. Where I went to church this morning, Sunday, seemed to be really important only to me. And uh, I would hope that with all the uh, matters that face the United States, and uh, that we would certainly be able to uh, discuss all those questions which go to the survival of this country without really worrying about my religion. The Constitution took care of all this matter most satisfactorily. The First Amendment on the Separation of Church and State, Article 6, which says there shall be no religious test for office. That's what I believe. And that, in my opinion, is what the majority of the citizens of Wisconsin believe. Would you agree, though, Senator, that politicians look at it a little differently? And we'll be looking at this Wisconsin election to see how well you do in the non-Catholic areas of the state. Well, I have no doubt that people will be studying this election and analyzing it as they have already. But I think that the citizens of this country vote for a candidate, I hope, on the candidate's competence. That's been my experience in 14 years in politics. And until it's proven wrong, it is my experience now. Now, I've entered the West Virginia primary. The West <coughs> Virginia has the lowest percentage of Catholics in the United States, 3%. Now, if I felt that there was a massive anti-Catholic vote, do you think I would have entered West Virginia? Well, have you encountered, so far as you're concerned, Senator, any, any suggestions that there is an attempt to whip up anti-Catholic sentiment in one form or well, another? Well, there was an advertisement placed in the state by a very mysterious source. Nobody right and quite knows who produced the money for the ad. Somebody came up from Florida to place it and paid for it in cash. Senator Humphrey certainly had nothing to do with it. I know that. There so was it. Uh, I, I, but, so, but except for that, I must say that in this state, I've really found a very little of that. Senator, there is another point uh, that, that in which religion uh, is raised. There was an incident in Dijon the other day where the elected mayor of the village, who was himself a canon, uh, was directed by his ecclesiastical superiors not to receive uh, Mr. Khrushchev. Uh, this raises the question of whether such a thing could happen here. Well, now, Mr. Lawrence, there are two, I make two exceptions to that. In the first place, this man, as I understood it, was a member of the clergy. Was he not? I believe that is true. Well, therefore, yeah. he was subject to some disciplines, like all clergy are, that uh, the, the citizen is not, number one. Secondly, it happened in a country abroad. Thirdly, General de Gaulle is himself a Catholic who's been meeting with Khrushchev very steadily. So, of course, it doesn't apply to citizens, and I would not permit it to. I would not accept any directions from anyone in regard to my constitutional oath of office, whether I'm a congressman, senator, or president. In other words, no instruction like that would ever be given in this country. No instruction like that would be obeyed. I want to make that very precise. Senator, you've said in the past that uh, you've attached a great deal of importance to the results here in Wisconsin. In fact, I believe you've indicated that if you did very badly, you might reconsider the whole That's business. right. In my opinion, if I'm not successful here, I don't think uh, my chance of being nominated would be very good. Well, my question is, uh, why attach so much importance to a primary, especially in view of the history of Wisconsin, which is very eccentric on the presidency? <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'd accept that description, uh, but I will. Because I have chosen to run for the presidency through the primary route, I submit my candidacy in places like New Hampshire, Wisconsin, West Virginia, Maryland, and so on. If I cannot demonstrate that I have popular support, then I don't think I ought to be nominated. Now, I know it's a hazardous way, and it may not make complete sense to do it just this way, but I must say it's far better than the other way, which is to have the candidates chosen just by political leaders. Now, I, I have, there are some people who want to be nominated for the who are candidates. Senator Symington's announced his candidacy, but he is not running in any primaries. 
Isn't it true, Senator, that uh, one reason for this route was that you felt, as a Catholic, with the history of the Al Smith campaign, that you needed to demonstrate your vote yes, getting strength right, right. in order to convince the convention? That's right. I must say that if you didn't have primaries, I don't think I could run. The Al Smith experience holds heavy over politicians, and they say they forget that Governor Landon, who's a Protestant, was defeated in 1936 and got only two states, but nobody then suggests that that should govern, but the Smith experience does govern. He was defeated, and therefore they feel that it might be difficult for a Catholic because people might vote against him because of his religion. I'm hoping by running in these primaries to demonstrate that that is not a valid uh, concern. Senator and if I can't win them, then of course I wouldn't be done there. Senator that. Kennedy, a group of uh, Senator Symington's supporters in this state, a Milwaukee group, have come out urging the voters to vote for Senator Humphrey. And your campaign manager, I believe, has called this uh, bad taste or dirty pool or something like that. Do you case. share his opinion? Well, I'm not, I don't use the adjective. I just say that it, it doesn't seem to me that the people of Wisconsin are going to be very impressed by advice from a group, from a candidate, who himself would not enter the primary and run. Why Senator Simonian has run in no primaries. He's, and as a matter of fact, Mr. Lissagor, as you know, no president of the United States has been elected who hasn't run in primaries of one party and, or another. Now. His group, therefore, advised that they should, I should be defeated. It seems to me if Senator Simon had run, we would get a fairer test. I'm sorry he didn't. Do and you therefore, I, I feel that the people of Wisconsin will make a judgment between Mr. Humphrey and myself and not pay much attention to the outside advice. Do you regard this action, though, as a stop Kennedy uh, action? Well, I think it certainly isn't. Uh, wish me well. <laughs> Senator, one of the uh, uh, odd things about the Wisconsin primary laws is the ability of, of Republican voters to cross over onto the Democratic side. On the basis of your surveys, have you any indication of how large a percentage of Republicans will be no, voting? What people sometimes don't realize about the Wisconsin law is that there are no registered Republicans or Democrats in the state. Yes. In other words, when you talk about a Republican voting in a Democratic primary or a Democrat voting in a Republican primary, what do you base it on? There is no registration. It isn't like a state where you are registered as a Republican, registered as a Democrat, and then you vote. What we're talking about, really, in my judgment, are independents who may vote for me, or may vote for Mr. Nixon, or may vote for Mr. Humphrey. But I don't think that you say, unless you made a determination of whether they had always voted for the Republican ticket, and then now were voting for me, I must say I think the crossover is overemphasized because of this reason. So well, have you, Aiden, on the basis yeah, of well, your... But I haven't got any information about it because my judgment is that the people, there's a great mass of independents in this state, as there are in my own state of Massachusetts. They will vote either for Mr. Nixon, Mr. Humphrey, or myself. Senator, <coughs> you've traveled far and wide across the state. What have you found to be the issues in this state? What are people concerned about? What are they worried about? Well, I would say domestically, of course, is the drop in dairy income, which is 15% in one year, which makes it a terribly important problem to this state and really the United States, because these uh, dairy farmers are an important market, and uh, they are having, and that kind of a drop is catastrophic. So that's the number one problem. Then there's great interest in the so-called in the Ferran bill, which provides medical payments out of Social Security funds, in strengthening the education system. Then beyond that, I, there are other conservation and so on, but then I think there's great interest in foreign policy. Cuba, the state of our defense, our relations with Russia. Senator, I've heard it said in Wisconsin that you have been moved to the left by having to deal with the Humphrey campaign. What's your answer to that? No, I hope I'm in the same general trend that I've been for a great many years. I, I haven't moved to the left. You don't think you've changed your position on any issues since you've been campaigning here? No, I've been campaigning here for three months. We haven't had any issue. That's uh, not a, uh, I don't think there's any evidence for that. My view is the same as it's been for a good many uh, months and years. I hope I can learn. I think primary is the most valuable experience in the world. It's the best education. But I don't really know uh, where uh, my position is particularly Doing shift. I, I must say it's, I've been educated on some problems about which I hadn't known very much. So Senator, to that move that outside of Wisconsin for a bit, if I may, uh, as a serious candidate for uh, the nomination and approaching the convention now, uh, do you approve of the plan of Paul Butler and others to bar from the floor Southern delegations whose electors for president are unpledged, uninstructed, uh, not bound to support the candidate of the Democratic Party? 
Well, in the first place, I hope that the uh, southern states do not adopt the independent elector. That would mean that the candidate who might be nominated for the Democratic Party or the candidate and the candidate for the Republican Party would run in November. And then the electors, regardless of whether the state went Democratic or not, could then vote for whom they want, a third party, the Republican candidate, even if the Democrats had carried the Senate. So I'm against that because that's really against the democratic process. Now, as to whether they should be seated, it seems to me that we ought to make a judgment based really on who the delegation is. For example, in the state of Alabama, there will be a contest between two slates. The delegates who come to the convention may be what might be known as loyalist Democrats, in other words, for having the electors responsible to the will of the people. But the, uh, in the same primary, they might have chosen to have independent electors. Now, should you deny the delegation from Alabama the right to sit on the floor, even though they are anxious that the party have party responsibility. I, I think you'd have to make a better judgment after you've seen the trend in the South in the next two months. Well, Senator, we have, besides Alabama, we have five other states that have adopted the free independent elector rule. Uh, assuming that those delegations were not friendly to the National Party, any one of them or all of them, would you favor well, I seating think the such? Well, I think the delegates should indicate. I, it seems to me, regardless of what you think as a uh, person about the Democratic Party or its candidate, that you should not deny the majority of the voters the right to be able to pick the candidate that they want. And therefore, I think we have a right to expect that the delegations from the, these states will support the concept of responsible electors. And I'm, I must say that would be my position, and I'd use my influence. For and if effect. they do not support responsible electors, well, we'll we make would a judgment not seek them. No, I would make but a judgment on that, Mr. Lawrence, except I do feel very strongly that the elector, after all, the electoral college is a sort of an anachronism from the Constitution, to permit those electors to vote for a candidate who wasn't even on the ballot, I would say, would be a real uh, a departure from democratic process. I'd be greatly opposed to it, and therefore I would be very concerned about delegates coming who are planning to have their electors completely independent of the result in the state in November. Well, Senator, now, what we should do about it, how it should be handled, I think we can know better in June and July, but at least there's my general sentiment. But but what will happen between now and June and July that will change the situation? The problem is an obvious one. What's the answer? Why, why do you wait well, till June? I think we June? should make it extremely clear, Mr. Novins. I hope I've made my position clear that we should make it extremely clear that we want the delegates to do their best to come to the convention to see that the electors are responsible. That's my view of what we ought to try to do. Senator, if you know, the best way of doing it, we'd have to make, that's what to make determination on, but at least my view is that the electors should be responsible to the majority vote. Now, the best way of affecting that, I think, is the question. Do you think the civil rights measure that appears about to come out of the Congress will be an adequate one for either you or any other Democrat to run on this fall? Well, I hope it certainly provides for... Uh, strength in voting, and uh, I think if it does that, that that will be an improvement. There are other civil rights which are in question, which I think the bill could contain, which I hope it would be before it's finished, and which I would support. Getting back to Wisconsin for a minute, Senator. Senator Humphrey has challenged you many times to a debate here. Uh, what is your reason for not accepting your challenge? Well, I saw the television. In the first place, I think Senator Humphrey and I have a general agreement on what the problems are facing the country and what the United States ought to do about them. We're members of the same party. And I think we generally agree on at least the major questions. I did happen to see, in 1956, Governor Stevenson and Mr. Kefaw, Senator Kefaw from Florida, on a half-hour television debate. And what you did was have complete agreement. Uh, and finally, it ended up with a rather a picayune analysis of each other's record, which I thought was just destructive to them both and certainly didn't advance the public interest. I've discussed everything. I appear on television today and answer any questions. Senator Humphrey does the same. We appearing both together on a television program tonight. I must say I'm trying to give my views as fully as we can, but I'm not going to attempt to get an attack on Senator Humphrey's record merely to make a debating point. Senator, Senator Bob, I'm curious. Here, you've, uh, you've seemed to have supported a great many of the Eisenhower administration's foreign policies. You've well, if I did that, Mr. Lissigo, no, I've supported him on, t on two points. One is Cuba, which I agree with. Secondly is this, the concept of going to the summit and on the policy so far towards Berlin. I disagree with the policy towards Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Now, how about the nuclear test ban approach? Haven't you agreed with yes, the Yes, I do agree nuclear with the nuclear test. Of course, the Soviet Union put the plan forward, and I agreed with the administration's determination to go ahead on negotiating, because I do think it's most hopeful. I've never thought we ought to make points about uh, foreign policy. I disagree very much about with some of their policy. 
For example, we've only had 100 people working on the field of disarmament for the last five years in government. We only have them today. And I think that's one of the reasons why I, it's been quite difficult. But I do agree with them on Berlin. I do agree with their decision to go ahead. I do agree with them on Cuba. I have other disagreements. Well, the disagreements you mentioned were rather broad ones. Africa, Asia, I think you well, said, I, and Latin America. Well, well they're broad, in, but uh, I'd be delighted to detail them. I don't think they've supported the development loan fund. I think the president's trips, while beneficial, have not been supported by affirmative action since he's been home. I think India is moving into a serious economic situation. The United States has failed to mobilize, for example, the Western European countries or our own resources to assist them. We have ignored Latin America. May I ask you one specific, yes. uh, one more specific question in this connection? If you were president <coughs> next January, would you continue the moratorium? Would you continue an agreed moratorium on small underground tests? which is a part of this president. Yes, proposal. I wrote the president of that effect a few days ago. You did write to yes, him? Yes, that's right. Senator Kennedy, I'm, I'm a little curious. You said a moment ago that you thought you were in general agreement with Senator Humphrey on most issues that you well, vote I think the we Senate party. On these matters which you've just discussed, I do think so. Well, then, what will this Wisconsin primary decide? Is this the a quite personality quite contest? Quite well, well, personality isn't quite the word I would use, Mr. Nolan. If you mean by personality which candidate has the most attractive manner or smile, what we're talking about is the presidency of the United States, which has mo great responsibility. He names all members of the courts. He names all members of the regulatory agencies. He can veto acts of Congress. He can negotiate with Mr. Khrushchev. And I would say that judgment, competence, sense of responsibility, emotional balance and stability, all of these things go into picking a president. We're not picking a congressman or a senator. And these are the matters about which, because there'll be many new problems, problems which Senator Humphrey and I haven't even discussed because they've not even appeared on the horizon that the next president must address himself to. So I would say the key is really these qualities in picking a president. In other words, this primary election will really not be decided on the basis of issues. It, well, well, Mr. Uh, Nolans, I don't know of a more important issue than the one we've been talking about. They will not, it is not when you choose members from the same party who are generally in the same political stream, for example, a nuclear test ban on defense, on the underdeveloped world and so on, Senator Humphrey and I agree. There's nothing particularly remarkable about that. We're both members of the Democratic Party. We're both liberals. What I think is at issue is the most important point, which is the ability of a man to hold the most important office in the free world, what his judgment is. All these questions, I think that's the big question that we have to decide in picking the president. Senator, Senator, Senator Humphrey has said, though, in connection with the business of not speaking on the issues or not debating him or not talking about the record, that Wisconsin voters, I quote him, won't be satisfied with being bit players in a Hollywood spectacular. <laughs> what do you say to the charge that you constantly hear that the receptions in Sinatra and Hollywood is not the answer to the Well, I hope I agree there. with you. It isn't the answer, but I, Mr. Lissigo, I hope... Uh, uh, every time I've spoken, and I spoke, I average about 10 speeches a day, I speak on an issue during my speech, and then I have a question period and give my views on any question the audience wants to ask me. Now, you can just use all the descriptive adjectives in attacking an opponent, and I haven't criticized Senator Humphrey in any way because I have a high regard for him before this campaign started, and I'm going to end up that way. And I don't care, really, what phrases are used to attack me or criticize me. What is its substance is, it seems to me, our views and all questions, I'm delighted to ask them today. And I have, to every audience I've addressed, I've had a question period. I don't know what more I can do to discuss my position. Senator, I'm very interested in the fact that you wrote the President's letter the other day about this nuclear test ban. Was this a voluntary act on your part, or is the President perhaps canvassing? No, it was a voluntary act. Entirely voluntary. That's correct. Do you know and you offered, you offered him your views with the idea that uh, it would assist him in, in making well, I up thought his at least mind. He was concerned about that. At least I agree. It's, I'm still a long way from being the president, but I am one of the candidates. That's what I meant. And I thought that uh, it might be useful to him to at least have my view on it as one of the many candidates. Are you aware of whether your other uh, rivals for the Democratic nomination might have done the same they thing? They may have. I haven't discussed it with them. Because it might be useful to the president, even at this stage, if he had a a kind of bipartisan agreement. I'm sure he, he couldn't name the next president I'm sure out of this group. From knowing Senator Humphrey's view on the matter that he, if he hasn't, he has stated his view that in support of the uh, negotiating with the Russians, so I, I'm positive if he hasn't written, he has indicated his view, and uh, I don't know about the others. Senator, one more question on that point. Would you recommend to the other candidates that they do the same as you have done? Well, they, well I think they should make their decisions. Uh, 
but I think it would be valuable, at least that the president would be completely free to uh, go ahead without any regard to the problem of binding his successor. Senator, we've been talking so far as if there wasn't a third name on the ballot besides yours and Mr. Humphreys, or that is Mr. Nixon's electors. Uh, I notice, or at least so I've been told, that you have not specifically attacked Nixon and that uh, Senator Humphrey has. I wonder how you, why you have acted that way and how you think Nixon will come out of the boat on Tuesday as a candidate. Well, I've uh, criticized what I consider to be uh, administrative inadequacies in the last years. I've never attacked mm -hmm. people uh, personally, and I'm not attacking Mr. Nixon personally. I, what I'm talking about, a difference of opinion on, on positions. Mm -hmm. For Bill and all the rest, I, uh, aid to education, all these questions which are important. I've discussed those in detail. Do you and, uh, I, I'm, I've been critical of those places where I think the administration's been wrong. Do you see any partisan politics in the inclusion of Mr. Nixon in the Camp David talks with the British Prime Minister and the exclusion of the Democrats? Some have suggested this is a build-up for the Vice President. Well, I think the, bill, uh, the Vice President has been built up uh, by uh, administrative decision, but I must say it's not, uh, I don't find it uh, unnatural. And you don't particularly object in the, in the case well, of providing it doesn't interfere, I think that uh, there's some disadvantages Mr. Nixon's going to have to have uh, running on the position. For example, the decision of the administration to oppose the Ferran bill, to oppose medical assistance for those over 65, that's a heavy load for Mr. Nixon to carry. I don't object to him getting some benefits because he's going to have to run on the whole record. So I, I, that's all right. Senator, a quick question or a, a request for a prediction. Where would you say the votes in Wisconsin that used to go to Senator McCarthy will go on Tuesday? I don't know. I suppose they'll be distributed through the candidates. I have no idea. Senator, another quick question. In the event that you don't win in Wisconsin, do you have a second choice candidate for the well, Democratic Right now, Mr. Lissigo, I haven't really regarded that uh, prospect. I haven't a second choice yet. Senator, do you think any Democratic candidate can lick a Nixon Rockefeller ticket? Well, any candidate, but Nixon Rockefeller, they haven't put that ticket together yet. I would say any candidate nominated by the Democratic Convention who is willing to conduct a vigorous campaign can win, yes. Do you accept it as an accomplished fact at this point that uh, Vice President Nixon will be the Republican candidate this fall? I regarded it as uh, almost inevitable. Where do you think he's most vulnerable in terms of campaigning? Well, I think uh, Mr. Nixon is vulnerable in making a judgment as to who should be the best man to lead the free world at a very dangerous time. Well, Senator Kennedy, thank you very much indeed for coming here to face the nation. Thanks also to today's news correspondents, Peter Lissigor of the Chicago Daily News, Blair Clark of CBS News, William H. Lawrence of the New York Times. This is Stuart Novins. There will be no Face the Nation program next week. We invite you to join us on April 17th when our guest will be another Democratic candidate for the presidential nomination, Senator Stuart Symington of Missouri. Our program today originated in the station of WITI Television, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Face the Nation was produced by Michael J. Marlowe. Associated in production, Ben Flynn and Norman Gowen. Directed by Bill Linden. Today you saw Democratic presidential candidate Senator John F. Kennedy of Massachusetts face the nation. Al Walker speaking. This has been a public affairs presentation of CBS News.